Hello there guys and welcome back to the FIFA 21 career mode with Leicester City and today we've got episode 28. In the last episode they made a huge blow and as you can see Harvey Barnes is injured and he's going to be out for 7 months. On a brighter note then we are still top half of the Premier League and you can see now we're starting to make quite a bit of a gap. We're 9 points ahead of 2nd place Arsenal, quite a few points ahead of 4th place Manchester City now. So we're starting to find a bit of a gap between us and the rest of the top 4. In today's episode, then, we are going to start in the third round of the FA Cup, taking on Bradford. So here it is then, the big talking point, NDD. Let's add him to the transfer list and see if any offers come in for him in this January transfer window. So then, guys, coming up in today's episode, we're finally in January, which means we do have the January transfer window. Are we going to do any business? Is NDD going to be sold? We have added him to the transfer list to see if an offer will come in for him. Pretty sure it will be 90 rated, only 25 years of age. Like I said, we've got a game against Bradford in AFA Cup. And also we've got two games coming up in the Premier League. One against United and one against Leeds United. So if you guys do enjoy today's episode, please go down below and smash the like button. Hit above 100 likes, that'd be amazing. And also guys, if you are new, you want to see more of this Leicester City career mode, hit the red subscribe button down below as well. So let's get into some of your guys' comments then from the previous episode. And the first one coming in here from Liam saying, Harvey Barnes is injured, so why not bring in Hlosek from Sparta Prara? He is a winger that can play centre mid, right wing and left wing. He'll be one for the future. Now, in the last episode, we noticed Harvey Barnes obviously got injured. Now, the question is, do we go out and buy another replacement left winger? Or do we go and bring someone in? Because we have had quite a few loan offers for Gibbons. Another one's just come in in today's episode, which we are going to have a look at. But if we do loan him out, do we go ahead and bring this guy in? I mean, he's, he can play striker by the looks of it. So maybe it's been updated since uh, this guy last looked. But he doesn't say he's a winger, but maybe he can play as a winger. So we are going to scout him and see what the scout report says when it comes back. So let's get into the second comment here then, which is from Matthias, saying a good right back with great potential is Lamptey. He is like 68 overall, but he can grow to maybe an 84, I think. Now, he did have two comments, and the first one was about San Pereira, because he pretty much is in the same bracket of Ndidi. You know, both players are, well, 89 and 90 rated, you know, very high rated for the team. And like I say, to keep it realistic, most, most likely both of them would have been sold in real life to, you know, much better teams. For, for example, top six or Barcelona, Real Madrid, so on and so forth. Anyway, now, if we was to sell him, like I say, if an offer does come in for, for Pereira and not in Diddy, I will sell Pereira. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I'm just going to sell in Diddy and that's it. Everyone else is off the market. Maybe no offers will come in from Diddy and only for Pereira. So, like I say, if one of them does go and it is going to be Pereira, maybe, then Lamptey wouldn't be a bad option. So let's get into the final comment then, which does come from Rahul saying stop slowing your player when you're in front of goal. He can finish while sprinting. Now it must just be some mental thing that I have going on and what I mean by that is that for some reason I just feel like when you're sprinting and you shoot at the same time the shot is going to be a lot worse. Now, I know back in early FIFA's, FIFA 12, FIFA 13, for example, if you were shooting and you went to shoot at the same time, if you are sprinting, sorry, and went to shoot at the same time, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have any effect. But I feel like in these most recent FIFA's, FIFA 19 and FIFA 20 and 21, they sort of altered that. So when you're sprinting and you shoot at the same time, it's not going to be as accurate as if you were to slow down. So maybe I'll give this a go and try, you know, running at the same time as shooting and just see if it's actually going to make any difference. So it's just something I've made up in my head. So then, like I said, we did have a loan offer for Matthew Gibbons. Now, at the start of the season, I was going to loan him out because we had four wingers at the club and he just wasn't going to get any game time at all, was he? And being 76 rated, only 18 years of age, I just felt like he needed to go and get some more game time and up that overall instead of being sat in the reserves doing nothing. But now Harvey Barnes has been injured, I feel like it adds you know a little bit of importance to his role at the moment because we got Saar in the first team. And having him as a backup wouldn't be too bad. Let's be honest, 76 rated. He's not going to cost us anything. He's already at the club. So I feel like what we're going to do is keep him and not sign any other left winger. And that way, Saar, be Saar can become the main choice left winger. And then Gibbons can be on the bench. So I'm going to reject this offer. Keep Gibbons. Because like I say, he's not going to cost us any money to keep him at the club. And I feel like he's a good quality on the bench left back. So then, if Ndidi is to sell in today's episode, like you guys might already know by the thumbnail and title, but right now as we're recording this, obviously I don't know if he's going to sell or not. But if he does, this is who his replacement is going to be. Renato Sanchez from Lille can play centre mid, right mid and CDM. Four-star skill moves, four-star weak foot. And like I said, we scouted this guy out. How high work rate as well. Got all-round good stats. And he's not going to cost us too much EV. You can see he's valued at 33. Scout recommends 33 bang on to sign him. I've never seen that before. 
So that would be nice and cheap for us. And I reckon if Ndidi was to sell, we could get easily 100 plus million for him. So we just had a player chat here then from Ndidi saying, Hey boss, I am a bit surprised you're looking to move me on. But I can't say I'm unhappy about it. And I don't know how to feel about that, I've got to be honest. Um, not that I can't guarantee you games. I'm not looking at options. I'm just going to say it's the best thing for you. Because I just feel like right now, he, he deserves a much better club with how he's playing. And being 90 overall, like I say, it does make it realistic. And just going down here to saying he's under. You can see here, Nebo Games Gaffer not playing isn't good for where I am in my career. And last episode and the previous episode before that, I've tried to give him games. But obviously, it's just not enough for him. And he has got an important squad role. We did mention about possibly moving him on. So I think in today's episode, in fact, we'll do it now whilst, whilst we're on the topic. Let's go over to squad and add him to the transfer list. Because we did mention that um, yeah, he, he, Seng is under again. Just He's too good to be sat on the bench, let's be honest. And he wouldn't sit on the bench um, if it was real life, would he? So let's go ahead, add him to the transfer list. See if any teams come in for him. And if they do, we'll have to look at a right back for the bench. And just to quickly add on, I don't mean a right back. I meant a right winger. I don't know how I got them two mixed up. So let's get into this first game then against Bradford. We are going to simulate this game. I was going to play, but with so much going on, you know, playing against United as well as playing against Leeds. In today's episode, I'm expecting some transfer activity to come our way. So not to make the episode too long, we are going to sim this one against Bradford City. I've made a few changes to the side. Jovic is going to come in. Senge Zunder is going to play on the right-hand side. Lewis Cook and De Silva in the middle. And Fofana and Max Aaron's coming in in defence. Now, I was going to play Ramsdale in goal. But thinking back to the Carabao Cup, I don't want to go out in this first round. If we do, you know, it, it just is what it is at the end of the day. But having Smythe and goal will help, will help us a lot. So let's go ahead and quick sim it. Should come out with a win with the team we've got. And we are going to come out with a win. Vardy with two goals. Saar with two goals. Bradford are going to get themselves a goal. Uh, a little bit annoyed that so uh, Jovic didn't get himself a goal because he got subbed off in the 55th minute. But Vardy came on. Ricardo Pereira came on as well at centre-back for Fofana. Unsure why that was, but either way, we get the 4-1 win and we progress through into the next round. So I've just seen this then in the news section. In form, Vardy courted by FC Barcelona. Now, out of all players that I definitely don't want to sell, that's definitely Vardy because at the moment he is on, I think, 16 goals. I think it does tell you in this article here. 16 goals so far this season. I think he's on actually more than that. Um, overall, let's just quickly go over to the squad hub and just check that out because I've got a feeling it might be on 20 overall in all competitions. So let's go down to stats and let's sort it out by goals um, at the top and let's go up. Vardy at the moment is on 28 goals in all competitions, a lot higher than I thought. And you can see there, 28 goals in 34 matches is pretty insane. He's got to be the most informed striker in the world at this point. I've got to be honest, Harvey Barnes is on 10. But yeah, Barcelona looking at him and wanting to sign him. Now, if an offer does come in, what do we do? Like, Vardy being 34, do we retire him as a legend here at Leicester City? Or do we go ahead and accept it and let him go and live maybe a season at Barcelona? What do we do, guys? Let me know down below. So let's get into the second game then against United. No offers are coming yet for Nendidi. So we're just going to have to get into these games and just see how it goes. But uh, against United, we are going to be at home at the King at Power Stadium. One interesting thing is Van der Beek is playing behind Jimenez. Just pretty interesting to see. I thought Van der Beek was more like a centre mid CDM sort of player. Maybe not so much a cam. I wonder why they're not playing Fernandez there. But either way, let's get into the game against United and get three points to start today's episode off. Okay, United getting forward here. Kimmich. And now, okay, the block from Middletow is going to go out. Man United are going to get themselves a corner here. Ten minutes in. And a campaign to remember Jimenez. Okay, he's on 20, He's on 13 so far. He's projected to get 26. Could he become the all-time Premier League scorer in one season? We'll have to wait and find out. But they played the corner short. No options really to pass to. Kimmich now. Surprising transfer, got to say. But Kamavinga. Here we go. Go on, push on forward. Keep going. Look at look at the runners. Look at the runners. Saar's there. Go on, Saar. Get to that. Knock that down. Just keep going, Saar. And, oh, okay. Uh, looking for... Jamie Vardy, that'll do. Finesse shots. Couldn't get it away. Still got the ball, though. I can see Camavinga's free. Go on. Get it. Oh, okay. Going to be blocked from the defender once again. Telemans looking to get forward now. Mares to Vardy. And, okay, I was going to maybe play it to Saar there. Looking for Mares. Still got there. Back to... Oh, just couldn't get that pass back to Vardy. If we could have pulled that off, he would have been through. Okay, that was a poor pass. United still have it here. Kimmich trying to play that killer pass inside. 
And there we go, into half time here, still 0-0 in this game. United, I'd say, have majority of the chances so far. We had a decent chance early on, but uh, nothing serious just yet. Great ball over the top from Kimmich, falls to Rashford, tries to get the header inside. Just couldn't pull it off, Telemans here, now going to try and get on the counter. Once again, counters haven't really been doing us any favours, but Saar now. And, okay, players catching up with him quite easily. Go on, get a decent cross in towards Vardy, can he chip? Oh... Okay, I've seen, we've scored that sort of goal before with Kamavinga. It was from the throw-in, if you guys remember. But uh, it's, it's going to go out. We are going to get the corner, aren't we? Yes, we are going to get the corner. Mares to take it. Go on, Vardy with the header. Go on, Vardy. Get the header. Oh, okay, he's not going to get the header. Falls to Kamavinga. The pass, though. Militao back inside Kamavinga. Down. Saw with a finesse. And it's going to get blocked once again. Van der Beek. Great ball down. Martial is going to find the back in the net. 72 minutes in. And United make it 1-0 in this game. Martial, who... I'm trying to think who he might have come on for. He might be on the right-hand side, actually. I'm not too sure. No. He's been on the whole time, hasn't he? I'm, I, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know if he's come on or not. It's only recently I've noticed his name. That's why. Van der Beek with the assist. And I've tried to get in there with Militao, I believe. And I was going to slide in, but just, just couldn't get there in time. And he fires that one round Schmeichel. And there we go. This is his first goal in the Premier League this season. And United go 1-0 up. Up towards Tielemans. Maybe a chance to get a goal back here. Making the run up the pitch. No one really up with him. Waiting for players to get in the box. Going to have to try and get round this guy. Get the cross in. Just couldn't get the cross in, man. 89 minutes in. Two minutes going to be added on. United are going to make another change here. Fred's going to come off. Lucas going to come on. Let's get out to Mares. Here we go, Tielemans. Keep, just keep a hold. We'll get the pass. Okay, he's got the pass off in towards Saar, in towards Vardy, and oh, it's just stupid enough to go for the shot. Why did they go for a shot that far out? I'll never know, but uh, the game's ended. United get the 1-0 win here away from my home. A disappointing start. I've got to, I was going to say a started episode. Obviously, we've got the win against Bradford, but this feels like the start, and yeah, it's not great. Dropping three points against United. So here we go then guys, we've had an interesting transfer offer here for Ndidi. Let's take a look at this because this guy we was going to sign. So you can see Bayern Munich is looking to offer Dennis Zakaria as a part of a swap deal for Ndidi's market value. Should be between 115.9 and 169.9. Well not point now, but you, know, you get what I'm saying. So they're offering 32.2. Zakaria, how much is he currently worth? 54.5 million plus that is going to be what? 80, 86, 86.7, they're going to offer. I want more than that. So not being funny, but he's valued between 115 and 170 million. Do you know what I mean? If Man City coming with a better offer for 130. And if I accepted that 130 offer, I could have gone ahead, got that money, and just bought Sakaria probably off by Munich. Now, I do like the sound of the offer because the guy they are offering is a descent of defensive midfielder. 25, he's not too old. He's 85 rated as well. So, you know, I'm just a bit surprised. So let's go ahead and um, negotiate this offer with Bayern Munich because I, I just want more money. And no way I'm accepting that price tag for Ndidi. You know what I mean? He's, he's five overalls higher than this guy. And I just feel like we're getting taken for a ride. So, 32 million. I want that easily. Propose a new transfer fee. I want to easily push that up to 50. So, he's valued at 105. I could, um, okay, let's, I'm going to push that up to 60 million, 60, and we get a player worth 54.5 million, which then takes that up to 100 and, um, 111, 114.5 million, which is, isn't the end of the world, is it? Plus we're getting a player, do you know what I mean? It's not we're getting 114.5, then we've got a buyer player, we're getting a player with that. So let's offer that transfer fee and submit that offer to Bayern Munich. It might just turn away at the, at, you know, straight away because they have got a player there 85 rated at 25 but just for the sake of it i'm not accepting the you know the offer they they offered us and they've got a deal and they're looking to well they're happy to process it so i've got to say i'm a little bit surprised by and accepted that offer straight away it now makes me feel like i could have asked some more friend did he but like i say don't get me wrong we're getting basically about 115 120 million that's just going off his value that's not saying how much this guy would actually go for if you tried to buy him like they might wanted 70 80 million for the player and that's what it would have valued him at so that way uh, it would have worked out we would have got a lot more for him did he? if you know what i mean i'm just basing off his value and you can see he does have a release clause of 90.6 million so we skip obviously paying that and all that sort of stuff so let's go ahead and negotiate with the player now and see what he would be after in terms of a contract. And I don't want you guys to feel like I've let you down and sold and did he for less. 
because like I said, that's just based off his value of the other player. And at the end of the day, if I wanted to sign him without Ndidi being in the deal, I might have had to pay 70, 80 million. So, you know what I mean? His value doesn't really mean too much. So squad role is going to be crucial because he's going to play, well, every game like Ndidi does. And let's have a see next. That's good. That's what we had in mind. The last happy to roll your offer in him. And now, okay, how many years? I'm going to say, I'm going to say four years. He, I can imagine he should be happy with that. And he is going to be happy with that. No release clause. And okay, a wage of 86,000. That's signing on bonus of that. And goals. Okay, let's remove the goals bonus. Let's edit the wage. Let's up that to 100k. 100k. I don't see why not. I'm a little bit surprised. Um, okay. Never mind. Yeah, there we go. 100k. He's still got the signing on bonus. Let's submit that offer. And now, like I say, this guy, I was thinking about signing, I think maybe in season one, at the start of season two. I'm just dead surprised how he's popped up back round once again. And I've seen people mention him down below in the comments. And, well, here he is. And he's not. that's not quite what he wanted, but he will accept. He's going to join the club on 100,000 a week. So there we go then, we have completed the contract. It doesn't mean the transfer has completed just yet, because as you can see, we've got to wait for Bayern Munich to finish negotiations with Ndidi, because obviously that could fall down and break down and he doesn't end up making the transfer. But at the moment, at our end, uh, he's got the green light, so we're just waiting to see what happens with Bayern Munich. So Inter Milan then have come in for Edward, saying they want to take him on a loan for two years. We're going to go ahead and accept that, just because at the moment, he is sat in the reserves, and I would like to see him go ahead and get some game time. You can see he's 79 overall. There's no buyback option in this loan deal, so I feel like we're going to go ahead and accept it. And if we need to at some point, we can always recall him. So there we go then. Ndidi has made the move to Bayern Munich for 60 million plus Dennis Sakiria. And we are going to get 55 million in the transfer budget. Now, like I say, just thinking back now, you guys might be commenting down below. You sold him for too little. You could have got a lot more. But at the same time, to make this career mode realistic, I wanted to make sure he went out the door. You know, not in a horrible way, but in a good way to make it realistic. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the swap deal isn't so realistic, but at the same time, and Diddy has gone. He has been sold. And we have got a replacement. He's not 90 rated. He's 85 rated. He fits in with the other ratings around the team. And I feel like it was a good bit of business. Plus... Like I said, we got in Diddy out of the club, which is what we wanted to do to make it more realistic. So let's go ahead then and add our new signing, could you call it, to the first team. And here he is, Zakaria. And he can play centre-back as well, which is nice. Does he drop? Uh, does he go into minus? And he only goes to a minus one, which isn't too bad. I'm pretty sure when we tried in Diddy there, he might have gone down to a minus three. So I'm pretty happy with that, that he can play centre-back as well. Because we did talk a little bit about in Diddy maybe learning centre-back, but... This guy can play it already, which is nice. So, like I say, 85 rated. Match sharpness isn't the best. So, we're going to have to build that up just a little bit to begin with. Got three star skill moves, three star weak foot. He's right footed. Medium, medium work rate. Only 25, so still got a chance to put a development plan on him, you know, and change that up just a little bit. Six foot three as well, and he is from Switzerland. And again, he's got great stats, 85 rated. And like I say, he's not going to be like in Diddy, where he's miles above the rest of the team. Um, pretty much like Pereira is now. He's the highest rated player we've got. Um, but Sakiria does fit in with the rest of the players in the squad. So this is how the league table then looks after that game against United. As you can see, we're now down to six points ahead of Arsenal instead of the nine. But it's not the end of the world. Obviously, we've built up that, you know, difference in terms of points to allow us, not to allow us to lose games. So I didn't lose on purpose. But, you know, if anything like that does happen, we will still stay, obviously, top of the table. But up next then, for the final game in today's episode, we are going to be taking on Leeds. We're in 14th place at the moment. Only five wins this season who are on 22 points. So here is then how we're going to look for this game against Leeds. The last game of today's episode away from home. It's still annoying they don't have the Leeds Stadium in the game yet. Like I say, you can understand with COVID, but I'm pretty sure Pez has got um, Ellen Road in their, in their game, yet FIFA don't seem to have it in their game. Pretty bizarre by me, I've got to say. But either way, like I say, you can sort of understand it with what's going on in real life, but why they can't do anything, I don't know. I don't know why it's not in the game is beyond me. But anyway, um, let's go into this one against Leeds. Like I say, Zakiria is going to play in this game. I'm just a little bit concerned with his match sharpness. Because um, it still is only 46. I haven't had any training sessions to try and train him up. Uh, let's sort out this bench here because Ramsdale shouldn't be on the bench. Let's put Chowdhury back there. And then we've got Chowdhury and Cook. Yeah, that's fine. Chowdhury and Cook on the bench. Chowdhury will probably most likely come on at some point. He has got 88 sharpness. But I just want to give uh, Sakiria his debut. And like I say, Diddy would be playing in this game. But uh, obviously now he's gone to Bayern Munich. And it's pretty mad, really, when you think about it. We've, got, we've had Madison, who's gone to Real Madrid. Now, in Diddy, who's gone to Bayern Munich? Is any of the players going to make a massive move 
I do wonder in this transfer window. But let's get into this game against Leeds and get a much needed three points. Okay, Leeds getting forward here. Roberts now on the ball. Just trying to get a decent little block in. And you're going to get called four offside there. 14 minutes in. And let's see if we can get maybe up this left-hand side here. Castagne. And, okay, let's play it inside. Zakaria now on the ball. And, okay, Vardy down this left-hand side. That's that's it. Here we go, Saar now. Get a low cross in towards Vardy. And he's going to beat the goalkeeper. And Sengi's under just couldn't get to that ball. And we could have almost been 1-0 up. Okay, Vardy's through. Off a great through ball. Go on, Vardy. 1-0. And it's going to go over. No way, man. I should have gone for the finesse. I really should have gone for the finesse. But I thought that was going across the keeper and into the bottom left corner, I've got to say. And I was a bit surprised he got there after that uh, through ball. But, yeah, that has to go in the back net, or at least on target. Okay, Leeds are through. And Leeds are going to make it 1-0. Rodriguez... And how does that go in the back of the net? We really aren't having a good episode today, are we? Sold our star player, lost lost to Man United, and right now we're 1-0 down to Leeds United. What is going wrong for us in this episode? You can see here, that, that's great, do you know what I mean? But there, how does that happen? I'm sure Smichael gets a touch trip, but I'm sure it just rebounds. Yeah, look, rebounds off his knee towards the player, goes over him. And into the back of the net. And there we go. Leeds won the up now. Just before half time as well. Militao gets this up to Tielemans. Going to try and play Vardy through. Vardy back to Tielemans with the shot. And okay, at least it's on target. And is that going to be clashed? Okay, it's not gonna, I thought it was going to be clashed as offside. We're going to get the cross in. And a header. But yeah, that, that, that wasn't great. But a much better start to the second half here. Okay, Zakira's down, won it back, looking for Saar, down to Vardy. Sengi's under, didn't really continue to run, but we're still going to go with it. Sengi's under, and okay, looking to cut inside, finds the pass, down to Kamavinga, and no way. Wow, we're getting some, like, half chances where we've got a chance to possibly bring something in. Kamavinga, okay, Saar in the centre. Saar, go on, run with it, go for the shot, and it's going to be blocked once again, man. Can't deal with this, I really can't. Sengi's under with the header. But it falls down to a Leeds player. Inside for Jamie Vardy now. Saar, go on, make that run. Come on, here we go. Saar is through. Go on, smash that. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. That, that was me sprinting and shooting at the same time. And I'm not saying this is going to define that for me. But if I just slowed down then, went for the finesse shot, I might have had a different outcome. And it's clearly just not worked. And Saar just fired that one over. That was a great chance to get a point in this game. Not long left now. We're definitely not going to get the win. I highly doubt but um, Leeds there with an injury. Not not good news for them. But here we go. Win that header. There we go. Saar. Get that up to Vardy. Get that back to Saar. That is great. Go on, Saar. Keep going. Go on. Across the goalie. And oh, my God. He's going to make the save, guys. Vardy for Jovic. Yeah, yeah, we'll make that change. Why not? We've got the corner coming up as well. And can we get a header? Can we get a header? Singh is under crosses it in. The punch away, though. Another header, we are going to win from Kamavinga. But I think ref's going to blow full time here for this game. And, okay, are we good? Yeah, we're not going to get another chance, are we? Yeah, we're definitely not going to get another chance in this game. I thought ref would have blowed it. So, there we go. The ref blows in full time whistle. Another defeat in today's episode. It's not been a good episode all round. And Leeds get the 1-0 win. So, there we go then. Here is the Premier League table. Arsenal now only three points behind us in the Premier League table. I wish... I could just re-record today's episode and have another go at them two games because I feel like I'm pretty hard done by, I've got to say, the United game, they won 1-0 and obviously the Leeds game, they're winning 1-0 and a bit of a fluke goal, I've got to say, bounce off the goalkeeper, back to the player, over the goalie, into the back of the net. Obviously, it does happen. Don't get me wrong, that's why I'm not too hard done by and um, that's why I'm not too disappointed because we are still three points ahead of, uh, you know, Arsenal in second place. But I've just got a feeling maybe... Just maybe, it's just scripted just a little bit, you know, for me to drop a few points. I'm not too far ahead of the rest of the teams. I don't know, but either way, we're still top of the Premier League. So we have had an email then that Edward has been loaned out and he has agreed to a two-year loan deal to Inter Milan. Like I say, um, a little bit of an odd one because, you know, if I do decide to play a formation with two strikers up front, I don't have a backup striker. But this way, I just don't think like, like we're going to need him anytime soon. And I don't want him sat in the reserves, wasting away, at least this time. Hopefully get some game time and come back a lot better player. So in the next episode then we will have Norwich in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Now in the first season our first player that we signed 
was Max Aaron's from Norwich. So that'll be an interesting game. And I think we will probably play that game and give some of the youth players a chance and see how they are in-game. So then, for today's episode, I actually don't have a player of the episode because no one scored. No one really created many chances. I've got to admit, Saar didn't really have a great episode. I've got to admit, Vardy, neither. I've got to say, a few chances I took with him went over the bar or just wide and just wasn't on target today. And, you know, it just wasn't a great episode all around. In terms of, you know, the gameplay anyway, in terms of in the league, like I said, we've got the win against Bradford. Obviously, Vardy did score two goals in that game. But in terms of the Premier League, where it really mattered, no one turned up. And hopefully next episode, we get a better tune out of the players and see what Sakira is really made of. But there we go then, guys. That has been today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, we sold it and Diddy. And Diddy has gone to Bayern Munich. And like I say, the deal in general, just one last thing to top it off, is the deal might not be as good as you wanted it to be. I might have been able to get 100 mil out of Bayern, 120 mil, 130, 140, you know, so on and so forth. I might have got loads out of them. But at the same time, I didn't know how many offers would have come in for him, did he? Like, that might have been the only one this transfer window. So I wanted to make sure he did go. And, you know, that way we still keep it realistic. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, please leave a like down below on the video. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode.